I want to look at inverse functions numerically and graphically right now. And then we're going to look at it algebraically, but numerically and graphically first. Now, this is kind of interesting um, when you look at it. Uh, see, all right, this function is function f. It, it names itself right there. So if I make a table for function f, it would look like this. Uh, there's a, a lot of points on here. I see a, a right here, right here, right here, or here, right here. Okay, look at all those points. Let's put them on my table. It would be negative one, negative five, and then they have a zero, negative three. They did a one, negative one, and then a two, one, and then a three, three. All right, uh, actually, yeah, if you plug these into this, that's what you would get for all those. And that's what your line would look like. And then, so here's our purple line. That, that is the, function. the F function. And then we have um, this other function. We're gonna be, this is gonna be the gray one. Uh, F inverse. That negative one is not a negative one power. That means inverse. 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 Look at the coordinates for this one. It's very interesting. Here's here's the first one right, right there. That's negative five, negative one. That's and that one is negative three, zero. And see that point right there? That is negative one, one. And that point right there is one, two. And then the last one that we have on here is three, three. I have an Ooh, what is your observation? Just look at it. <laughs> See, look, just look at it. Do you guys see? Do you guys see it? All the X's are now all the Y's. The X numbers and the Y numbers switch. So numerically, that's what inverse functions look like. The X's become the Y's, the Y's become the X's. So here, let me, let me back up for a minute. I'm gonna explain, touch on what you just said. So numerically, the X's and the Y's just switch. Now I have uh, two functions right here that are inverses of each other, and I have two functions over here that are actually inverses of each other, except there's one problem. This picture doesn't show you that there's a limit on this function. This function has a limit, because can we plug in negative numbers to this function? No, no this one right here that I'm pointing at. Yeah. I mean, because negative one times negative one is? One. One, and negative two times negative two is? Four. This is a parabola, actually, this function should look like this. It should go down like this, and it should come up like that. That's what that function usually says. But if we did that, this would not be a function right here because the inverse of it should look like this. But that's a problem because look at this, um, this gold function I just drew right here. I don't know what color you call that. Is that a function? No. If I drew a vertical line, it hits the, the function in two points. So is it a function? No. no. Uh, this, this function right here, x squared, actually does not have an inverse function unless you limit its domain. If I limit its domain, it only does this part right here, and that can be copied like so. Here, let's look at that numerically. Um, here's, a, here's my new f function. For my new f function, if I, if I, if I look at the points right here, we have 3, 9, 2, 4, and then 0, 0. Okay, you guys, you guys see those points? Mm -hmm. And then when I look at my other function, that's supposed to be my inverse function, I have um, 0, 0, 1, 1. And what was the other one? Four two. Nine three. Okay, I see the nine three right here. I see the four two right here. We didn't put the one one on this on this graph, on this graph right here. But then I also see the zero zero. Okay, so the x's and the y's switch just like we have up here. You guys see that? Okay, but what if what if we included um, this point right here? What if we included this point negative one one? And then I, I flip that for my other graph. I get one negative one. Do you guys see why this is now no longer a function? Yeah. You see the ones? This one has a positive one and this one has a negative one. That means one has two y values. Now it is not a function. Can't repeat, can't, repeat, can't have that. Okay, so um, t in order to say that x squared right here has an inverse function, 
the domain has to be limited. I know that's, that's kind of a hard concept to grasp, but the domain would have to be uh, 0 to infinity and no negative numbers so that we actually have an inverse function. Uh, so that this function is one to one. All right. Um, in order to show that a function is one to one, it has to pass the vertical line and the horizontal line test. See, if I had a parabola right here, does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, it is a function. Does it pass the horizontal line test? No, no it doesn't. That means it's not a it does not have an inverse function. It is not one to one, because if I inverse that, I get two. Uh, y values for each x value. So anyways, that's how you look at uh, inverse functions graphically and numerically. Graphically, they reflect about the y equals x uh, line. And as a table, numerically, the x's and the y's just switch. Next, we'll look at it algebraically.